Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Maureen Gashero. I'm a counselor and psychologist and I work with Father CK Foundation. So today um, I will be talking about burnout uh, because burnout is um, a term that we hear all the time out here, you know. And probably we ask ourselves, what is a burnout, you know? When someone comes home and they are telling you, I feel so burnt out. Or when you meet a friend and they tell you, I feel like I have a burnout. What do they really mean? Okay. So I'm going to be talking about it from my own uh, perspective as a psychologist. So a burnout is the state of mind that comes with long-term unresolved stress. So those are the key words. It's the long-term unresolved stress okay so it is stress that has built up over time and you didn't resolve it it's it's the one that causes the burnout okay so something that happens to you like within just a day and you just go home and you tell your friend or your your mom your husband that you have a burnout trust me that is not a burnout okay so um, I'm going to share my experience with a burnout uh, so that maybe we can all relate to what a burnout really is, okay? We cannot really describe a burnout without mentioning the stages uh, in which it occurs in, okay? Because a, a burnout is not something that happens like, pop, like just one day. No, it takes time. Like, like I've said in the definition, it's, it's the occurrence of long-term and resolved stress, okay? So it's stress that has built up over time. So there was this time uh, during the beginning of my career, um, I, I was working as a psychologist at this rehab and I was so excited about the job. Yeah, because I was like, hey, this is my first job. I'm fresh out of school and, you know, I'm going to gain experience and all that. I'm going to, to meet people at the rehab, <laughs> fellow psychologists. Yeah, so I was so excited for the job. And I remember when I got there, my first day, I was always up and running. Anytime someone needs something, I'm there. When uh, a group needs to be facilitated, I'm there. When files need to be arranged, I'm there you know, receiving guests, admitting patients, all that. I was just literally, <laughs> I'm sure maybe we can all relate to this. The first um, weeks, few weeks, to the first few months, the first few years at a workplace, they're usually the best, okay? And in, in a banner, in the stages of banner, uh, I would call this the honeymoon phase, okay? So um, with time, I remember it, it didn't even take long. Uh, it must have taken like two months. I started notice, noticing that I'm becoming a bit irritable when someone asks me to do something extra. Like say um, a, a counselor fails to come in for work on a certain day, and then I'm asked by the clinical manager to step in for her, and I'd be like, no no way <laughs> you know and yet um during the beginning of that job I, w I used to be so excited about it but then by the time the second month was there i was like refusing to do some things because i was starting to feel a bit overwhelmed i would call this the onset of of stress it's it's like the second stage of burnout okay because now i had started uh, feeling irritable feeling fatigued, feeling a bit stressed, starting to worry about my, my energy levels, you know? And I was like, ah, this is just life, you know? Life is like this, nothing is ever smooth. But then as time went by in the, say, sixth month, I was starting now to have like anger outbursts, you know? if. Someone maybe says something to me during at work, I would actually go and um, approach them and tell them, hey, 
why would you do that? And that confrontation, you know, I'm sure you can relate. And I had started even uh, starting fights with fellow colleagues, um, confronting them over small things, and I, I couldn't let go until I had won that fight, you know? Yeah, so my behavior had, had really changed. And I remember when I went home, it used to be like so overwhelming. I was still living with my parents at the time and my mom was starting to notice some things and she was like, hey, are you okay? Is work really okay? Like you always come home when you're so tired, you don't want to do anything. You don't even wash your clothes anymore. You don't even cook for us dinner anymore. Like what's wrong? Have we done something wrong? Is are they treating, not treating you well as, at work? And I was just like so irritable and angry. Okay? So I remember at this time uh, I started feeling, yes, I'm, I have changed. And I was like, no, you have to do this. You can't quit this job. You have to do it. You know? Uh, so by the time I was thinking about this, it, it, it was the, um, the first year. I still hadn't seeked help, I wasn't practicing self-care as such, just uh, a few, I don't know, self-care activities here and there. And by, by the time one year was ending, I'm telling you my life was chaos. It had resulted to like my physical headaches, migraines, mm, stomach cramps all the time. Um, eggs on my limbs, my legs especially, lack of sleep, um, I don't know, it, it was a hard time for me, I would say. And I remember during this time is the time that my manager noticed that actually I was not okay. And I wasn't in a position to actually tell him that I'm not okay because I didn't want to lose the job, okay? I really wanted to keep the job because I loved what I was doing as a psychologist. But unfortunately, what I didn't know is that I needed to practice a whole lot of self-care. Please, if, uh, if you get the time, uh, I hope I needed to practice a whole lot of self-care. Please go and watch uh, my previous videos where I explain about mental health and things you can do to take care of it. But I didn't know until my manager called me aside one day. He was very concerned. He was like, hey Maureen, I noticed you don't work very well under pressure uh, and your physical health has been deteriorating. You're missing work every now and then nowadays. You know, all these things, all these cares, fighting with colleagues. I don't know. He was just super concerned. And so he started also giving me his story about how he, when he started his career, how he never used to set boundaries with his colleagues, how he never used to go out with friends during free time, how he never used to engage in his hobbies. And I remember that, that talk, that meeting with him, it was so life changing. And when I went home, I actually sat down with a notebook and I noted down all the things that I would love to start doing. I literally made a bucket list. And I remember some of them included traveling uh, to see my relatives, um, especially my grandmother, because she, she's, um, she's one of my best friends. And she's this person who always motivates you to, to keep doing what you're doing. And she just, her, her compound is very calming. And so, yeah, I started traveling, going to see relatives, calling friends, going for uh, swimming classes, uh, journaling, all these things. And I'm telling you, by the time the next year was starting, I was a whole new Maureen. I was like this whole new psychologist. I had now learned how to actually take care of myself while working, okay? So if you ever notice that, you're not taking care of yourself every day. Remember, self-care is an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle thing. If you do not take care of yourself every day, remember that you're in line 
for getting a burnout. Research has actually shown, I was checking on, on, um, on Chrome the other day, that uh, the search for burnout or signs for burnout on Google, it has risen by 24% since 2020. So you can imagine where we are, guys. And also I saw another um, report on, um, on Citizen TV today that Nairobi has been rated as one of the most stressful cities in the world. Can you imagine, guys, we're we are like on the map of like the most stressful um, cities in the world. And so if Nairobi is a stressful city, it means that the whole country, our whole country is stressful, you know? So start noticing things that stress you, start making changes, start setting those boundaries and taking care of yourself all the time as much as you can. Watch my other videos for advice on self-care. And until next time, guys, please take care of you and research more on burnouts so that you don't get one. Okay, have a lovely week. Bye-bye.